Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Alex Flood. Over 100 Thunder Bay residents came together today to protest provincial mandates. By driving through the waterfront district with Canadian flags and custom signs, ultimately making their final stand at Waverly Park. The group of protesters initially met up at the waterfront parking lot and proceeded to drive through the city streets in single file fashion all the way to Waverly Park. Almost every participant at the protest brought their own Canadian flag, accompanied by many handmade signs expressing their disagreement with provincial mandates. One of the protest organizers, Sean Martin, was happy with the turnout and says this is only the beginning as they will not agree with the mandates in place. After the recent controversies at the Thunder Bay and Ottawa truck convoys, Martin says the protest against mandates is the same, but the goal of this protest is to speak their beliefs and keep it's the peace. deeply regretful. We try to do our best to, uh, to discourage that sort of behaviour. This is not what we're about here. We're about freedom. We're about fighting for the freedom of Canadians. We're about fighting for the freedom of our children. Um, we need to end these mandates. Martin says since not everyone can make it down to Ottawa to protest, it was nice to have people who share these opinions come together. Kenora MP Eric Melillo is calling on the Trudeau government to do more to repair and replace substandard housing on remote First Nations. The call comes one week after the Canadian Medical Association Journal released a report linking health problems in Indigenous children with the homes they're forced to live in. Mr. Speaker, last week a report by the Canadian Medical Association Journal linked substandard housing in remote First Nations to health problems in children. Overcrowding, poor ventilation, structural damage and mold are far too common in housing on First Nations in northwestern Ontario. Children living in these homes were found to have high rates of respiratory illnesses and hospitalizations, Mr. Speaker. It's something that Indigenous leaders and community residents have been saying for years. And it's why Canada's Conservatives have been advocating for immediate action to end this housing crisis. Today I want to echo the report's uh, calls to, to increase the housing stock and improve existing homes in First Nations, as well as its calls uh, for action on food insecurity, unsafe drinking water and the need to create economic opportunities on reserve. Mr. Speaker, Indigenous communities have been neglected and underfunded for far too long. The government must take action now. <laughs> The landscape has definitely changed as preliminary work has begun on the four-laning of Highway 17 between the Manitoba border and the city of Kenora. Crews are clearing the trees that once lined the highway in preparation for the next phase of the project, which will involve landscaping and blasting rocks. The current work area is a five-kilometer stretch from the border to Gundy Road. The twinning of the highway there has been a pet project of Kenora Rainy River MPP Greg Rickford for over a decade, dating back to when he was still the federal MP for the area. Rickford says he's excited to see roadway expansions that improve safety and remains adamant that the four-laning near Kenora is the way to go. But the twinning is the way we want to go out in northwestern Ontario. The Indigenous communities uh, feel, feel the same way and so that's what we're focused on. Uh, the good news is, is that we're, uh, we're building out the highways in an appropriate manner for, for northern Ontario. This is the only link across this entire country that is not served by a twin highway. The work is being done by members of the First Nations located in and around the Kenora area, several of whom received funding from the province in November to build capacity for a workforce. At least one person is homeless and fortunately not hurt following an early evening fire in Dryden Tuesday, which destroyed a mobile home. The fire broke out shortly before 7 o'clock that evening and despite the bitter cold and high winds, firefighters were able to keep the damage limited to the trailer and have the fire extinguished within two hours. Fire Chief Chris Wood says fires in trailer parks can be difficult due to narrow access points and trailers being in close proximity to each other, but crews were able to begin the attack quickly before the fire could spread. 25 members responded with eight trucks and so we got there to a working fire, reports of a working fire, a fully involved trailer. And so on arrival we, uh, we were told that everybody was out. So that's an older uh, part of town so definitely the, the, the older um, buildings definitely burn uh, a lot quicker. 
um, you know, we, we, we had a nice fast attack, so at least we, we still kept the structure kind of intact, but it's definitely a total loss. The cause of the fire is not known at this time. However, Wood says investigators will go back there on Wednesday to examine the scene in the daylight. In other news across the north, many small businesses have had to close their doors during the pandemic, but some entrepreneurs in Sudbury decided it was the right time to open a new business. CTV's Molly Frommer reports. Nowhere is a cafe and bar that opened in the summer of 2021. The owners say they knew they would have to face lockdowns while opening in the middle of a pandemic, but that didn't stop them. Pandemic or no pandemic, it was just a really exciting thing. But it's definitely been welcomed. Uh, very, very cool to have everybody come back to the bar, sit in the stools, crack a beer and just see everybody's faces again because that's what we're here for at the end of the day. The owners say what's unique about their location is that all the food and beverages are from Ontario and most of them are from here in the north. So we get a lot of beer from 46 North in town here on Kelly Lake Road and then the food is coming from local growers all across the region within, uh, sorry, Sudbury. Uh, so Gore Bay, Manitoulin Island, that area. We're going and getting some beef from Werner, Delu Farms, Thornlow Cheese. Of course, we're getting our breads from Golden Grain, Regency, all of that. So we're building a menu focused on what we have access to locally first. Another new business that opened is the Refinery. It's a women's only gym that originated in Sault Ste. Marie and has now expanded to Sudbury. And our gym was at capacity and so we knew that we needed to help more women and we had something that, you know, was good for every level. And, you know, we, our goal was to, you know, le- help women to become um, better than they, they came. This past week has been amazing. It's been so great. We just can't even keep up with the phone calls and the consultations. Infanti says she felt the need to open a gym for women only. She says after working with women for over a decade, she realized most women have a difficult time putting themselves first. So, you know, it's always about being a mom and, you know, being the taxi driver and, you know, being a partner and, you know, trying to work outside the home. And so we knew that women could just, if they could just set aside 30 minutes a day for themselves, um, it makes the world of a difference mentally and physically. Both business owners say they were happy to welcome customers and clients back into their locations following the latest lockdown. Molly Fromer, CTV News, Sudbury. For the second year in a row, the owners of Bay Village Coffee are raising funds for the regional hospital's Our Hearts at Home campaign by selling heart-shaped cookies. Running until the end of February, the staff at Bay Village Coffee are selling their double-stack sugar cookies with cherry buttermilk icing for $6 apiece. Last year, the team raised $18,000 for the Our Hearts at Home campaign, a program which brings full cardiovascular surgery to Thunder Bay and the Northwest. Bay Village Coffee have now set a new goal for $25,000 with the hope to sell 10,000 cookies by the end of the month. Alan Forbes, co-owner of Bay Village Coffee, says the campaign is a personal one for his employees. One of our former co-workers, uh, Shannon Hobbs, lost her mother to uh, heart disease just last year. And so that's sort of what's, uh, what spurred all this. We wanted to do something for, for Patty Hobbs. And uh, so we thought, you know, spreading awareness and raise some money. And, so it turned out really good, yeah. But we're just so grateful to our customers and the whole community. Being in business has just been such a wonderful experience for us. And, and this campaign is really, really close to our hearts. So we appreciate all the support. Bay Village Coffee is open Monday to Friday from 7 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon. Cookies can be ordered ahead of time online and over the phone. And walk-ins are also welcome. The annual Adult and Teen Sled for Eternity fundraiser saw over 60 snowmobiles make their way out to Kakabeka Legion to ride in support of youth facing addiction. Mitchell Ringos has the details. Even with temperatures surpassing minus 20, local snowmobile riders prepped their sleds to hit the trails for a good cause. The event hosted at Kekabeka Legion has a goal to raise awareness and funds for the first quarter of the year with $50,000 raised for this year's ride. Last year the ride was made virtual due to the pandemic but was back in person with just a couple precaution as start times were spread out for participants and riders were given the ability to start anywhere along the family route or the marked arteries throughout the trails. Chief Development Officer Robbie Ahuja says events like this are needed more than ever. 
uh, addictions is uh, gone rampant and, and our, our, we're getting calls every day from families and individuals wanting help and we want to be able to help them. So with these funds, we're able to help more people. The ride also had one very special participant, which would be 78-year-old Lavina Collins, who first rode at the adult and teen sled for Eternity fundraiser last year and was back again with a loaned sled to raise more funds. Collins says she's been sledding all her life and hopes to be back next year as well. I was sitting on the couch doing nothing and I can't walk after I sit in the couch all day and watch TV. So I have to do things like this to keep in shape. Mitchell Ringo's TBT News. Join now with Corey Nordstrom. Corey, just another fantastic annual event here in Thunder Bay. We have another annual event going on.